Hi, we're going to do some retro computing here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a new ROM chip and a mocking board into this Apple IIc Plus. And uh, this is a great computer. It uh, runs at 4 megahertz, which in my opinion is way too fast because all the software that I run it runs at 1 megahertz. So uh, one of the reasons that I want to insert the new ROM chip, the 5X, is to uh, make it easier to s slow it down to 1 megahertz and you know that it, it will persist on reset. So we'll do that. And then the mocking board mainly for um, the Ultima games, Ultima 3, 4, and 5, uh, to get some music in that. One interesting thing is this computer uh, came with a 3.5 inch drive for 3.5 inch discs and uh, a majority of the software came on the bigger five and a quarter inch floppies. You can attach a five and a quarter inch uh, floppy drive to the back of this computer. However, I mainly use the floppy emu, which is an emulated floppy drive where you can just select whatever disk files you want to use. And the nice thing about the Apple IIc Plus is it will boot directly to that floppy emu if you don't have a, a disk in the three and a half inch uh, disk uh, drive. Uh, however, in the past, uh, I did um, just for fun make um, some compilation discs for some of the popular Apple II games that I use. So I got a lot of these uh, on the Asimov uh, website and Cucumba, he made the um, ProDOS files of these. So I just kind of um, put them together into different discs. Um, as compilation. So I have um, links to these. I'll have them in the descriptions in case you're interested in, in downloading those. So uh, just going back to the mocking board, uh, this is a list that Ian Kim has on his website of the compatible games. And so like I said, I was mainly interested in the three Ultimas that you could see at the top. I also found a ProDOS file on Asimov uh, for Ultima 3, so you don't have to manually turn on the mocking board. You can just select it straight from the game. So um, that's that. So um, this is basically taking apart, just flipping over the Apple IIc Plus and taking the screws out. Then what you have to do is disconnect the keyboard. And then just uh, zooming in on the ROM chip. So I'm going to start by installing the new ROM chip 5X and that's the old one. And so you just have to be careful with a screwdriver to pull it out and then you can put in the, the new one, the 5X. Alright, what's so special about the ROM chip? Uh, the new one, so you can see that uh, when you do a control option reset you can see that a menu appears so it's it's a lot of helpful things there that you can do um, number seven is is one of the main reasons I got it was to just to make it easier to bump down the acceleration on the computer and having it persist through uh, re resets um, and there's an easier way actually to get just to the accelerator is if you do a control tab reset it'll bring you right to the accelerator and you can just hit A to toggle between on and off and you can keep it off. So then what we need to do is uh, look down two chips below that and we need to pull out that chip because that's where the mocking board is going to plug in but we need to save the chip to put it on back on the mocking board. Okay so if we pull off that chip carefully with the screwdriver you can see that on the uh, mocking board there's a spot for it. You would just put that onto the mocking board. And then you just need to push the mocking board, lining up the pins carefully. You have to push it back into that spot where you took the chip off and it'll fit nicely in there. All right, um, in Ian Kim's manual it says there's an optional step where you can uh, control the sound of the mocking board by using the volume slider on the 2C+. Plus. And so you just have to solder a wire. So what you're going to be doing is um, there's a wire provided in the kit and you just connect it from volume to uh, the right of that resistor, R50. So you just have to 
get your soldering iron and just solder it carefully to the right side there. And that way you'll be able to control the volume. Next step, there's some uh, speakers, two small speakers provided in the kit. And you just have to put one on each side, one on the left and one on the right. Plug it into the mocking board and you've got your two additional speakers on either side. Alright, and here's a little conflict that I found when I did it. It's uh, manually en enabling the mocking board. There's some of the games, if you remember from the list, some of the games said that you have to manually turn it on before you get the program running. And um, it doesn't really pertain to me based on what I want to use it for, but I tried to go to the AppleSoft prompt and type in this information, and uh, it didn't work. This is what happens when I put it in. So you see it just broke into the monitor and said so C4, F4. Um, not sure why it's doing that. I think it's a conflict uh, between the ROM chip and the mocking board. I could be completely wrong. Maybe it's just something's wrong with my computer. I really am not motivated to take it apart again and, and pulling out the chips and stuff like that. Maybe I'd be motivated if people commented and said, hey, I, you know, I use the, the ROM chip and the mocking board and I'm not having any conflicts at all. Then I'd be like, oh, okay, then, you know, something else is going on here. But, um, at this point, I'm not going to take it apart and, and find out why it's happening. Because, like I said, it's not a big deal to me at this point. So, here I will demonstrate in order the three Ultima games. And you can see uh, how you start it with the mocking board.